Hallelujah. How many of you need a healing in your mind today? In your mind today. I serve a God who's able to heal not only your body, but to heal your mind. And today I want to bring you a word about how God wants to transform your mind. And how the enemy wants to win a battle and he'll start right here. So we're going to give our mind to the Lord. So whatever you're fearing, worried about, God's greater than that. So Lord, we submit our minds to you today. And as we've been singing, Lord, I believe what you have said over what they are saying, over what she said, he said, they said. I believe your word today. And today we rejoice in you. We give you praise, Father. We thank you, Lord. Say this with me. Lord, heal my mind. May I be a person that thinks what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, I'm going to get my mind healed. How about that? one more time man I tell you what when I I see all these young people up here I'm I'm amazed they can stand for just 45 minutes you know you know amen you stand you got to sit down for a few minutes and get back up that's all right amen the problem is getting back up all right 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. We've been going through 1 Peter. And we're taking our time because here's what you got to understand. The Word of God, you have to meditate on the Word of God. Whenever I have had a good piece of beef or steak... The secret is that it has marinated a long time. When the Word of God, it's not just blip. No, we've got to let the Word of God dwell in us. We've got to meditate on that Word and the truth of that Word. And so that's what we've been doing in 1 Peter. And today we're in verse 13, just one verse today. And here's what the Word says. We're in our series on rock-solid faith. And today I want to talk to you about a made-up mind. 1 Peter 1.13, Therefore, with minds that are alert, turn to your neighbor and say, be alert. And fully sober. I don't know where some of you were last night, but maybe that's for you. Set your hope on the grace of to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. So today I'm just going to talk to you about three things. Be alert, be sober, and get ready for the grace that's getting ready to be revealed. Father, bless this word today in Jesus' name. And everybody that loved the Lord said together, amen. You may be seated in the presence of Jesus today. In middle school, I read a short story, and the story was called Harrison Bergeron. Harrison was in prison. They were living in what they called a utopian society, and everyone was supposed to be equal. And in order to make everyone equal, they had certain things that they did for everyone. 
everyone wore a device on their head called a handicap. People would wear, everyone would wear these certain glasses and they were only able to see certain things. If you were physically gifted, you had to wear weights on your legs and on your arms. This was the kind of life that Harrison Bergeron was entered. He was in prison. But one day he escaped from prison and he found himself walking into one of the government studios, television studios. And all of the musicians were there and there was a ballerina that was getting ready to perform. She had the weights on her legs. She had the handicap on. She had the glasses. So did the orchestra. And all, and all of a sudden, she began to dance. She began to move. But Harrison, he had escaped from prison and somehow was able to take the shackles off and he was able to take his handicap off and his glasses off. And so he decided that he would dance with the ballerina. And all of a sudden, he is tossing her up into the air. Her handicap falls off. Her weights begin to fall off. And they begin to dance as they've never danced before. Somehow, some of the musicians, they they took off their handicaps and they played like they never played before. And all of a sudden, the handicapper general looks to the control room and says, cut it off. And he... uh, Somehow he was able to take Harrison and according to this story, he took his life and the ballerina died as well. This story was supposed to be a story to talk about how communism was ineffective. But I'm taking this story today to declare to you that there is a handicapper general who does not want you to know the truth about the Word of God and about life and about freedom in Jesus. And because of that, he's going to do everything he can to keep that handicap on your mind. I want to tell you something today. If you don't know Jesus, you are under the total influence of the handicapper general, and his name is Satan. And he wants you to live by your flesh. He wants you to think fleshly thoughts. He wants you to live in fear. He wants you to walk his way. And the world today is under the influence of the handicapper general. But I'm glad. How many of you are glad that Jesus said, I've come to give you life and i come to give it to you more abundantly. How many are glad about that today? Jesus has come for that purpose. And he came to destroy the works of the devil. But until as a Christian, you see God's word as necessary to change your mind, nothing is going to work for you. You can have a little devotion today and maybe have a little devotion on Thursday and you come to church. Listen, they've done studies to say and they found out that at least if you are in the Word four to five times a week or four to five days a week, there's going to be some progress in your life. This is the prescription for your spirit, man. This is the prescription for your mind. This is how God can change your mind. And the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have a Bible. I can take this Bible home with me. I can put it on the coffee table. Wipe the dust off of it every now and then. I can sleep with it under my pillow. But nothing is going to change until I get into the Word of God. And so, therefore, you want your mind changed, you got to get into the Word. And Peter is talking about the people in his day. They're fleeing from Rome. They're under persecution. And they're bound by a lot of things, probably fear. 
Where am I going to live? Where is my family uh, going to reside? We've been moved from Jerusalem. And even though they were moved because of the persecution, the gospel's going with them, so a good thing is happening. But even in the midst of that, these people are going through crises. Where's my next meal going from? You know, people suffered for what we have today. And so when we look at these individuals, Paul wants to talk to them about their thinking and about their mind because he knows that the enemy wants them to succumb to their fears and their issues and their problems. And so he's saying to them, you've got to look and understand what God has said about you. And so when we look at this passage of Scripture, verse 13... The first word is what? Come on with me. What's the first word? Therefore. Therefore is an adverb. And what this means is that there are things that have been said prior to this verse that you need to go back and look and understand his premise before he takes you on to something else. For example... I am happy today because the wolf pack won. Therefore, I will look with faith to next week. You understand what I'm talking about. Therefore, whenever therefore is mentioned in Scripture, as a simple answer, you've got to look and understand what it's there for. So you got to go back. So what have we talked about already in these first 12 verses? We've talked about the fact that we've got a living hope. We've talked about the fact that there is an inheritance for us that will not spoil or fade. We've talked about the fact that the word of God that we have now, it has come through the prophets. It has come from those who proclaim it. It is such a great salvation that even the angels long to look into it. Paul's trying to encourage them to say, in the midst of where, where you are and you feel like you don't matter, God knows where you are and some great things have happened in your life. So therefore, he wants to encourage them. And because of this great salvation, it's been brought to you. There's some things that you need to understand. Therefore, because of this gospel, because of that living hope, because of that inheritance, because th what's happening in your life, you may be going through trials, but good things are being revealed with you. But because of that, therefore, with minds that are alert, alert. So the first line is be alert, be alert with minds that are alert. In the King James Version, it says this. Gird up the loins of your mind. Now, what does that mean? Now, if we lived in that time frame, or maybe we lived in the Middle East, we'd have a, a robe that we would wear. Can you picture me in the robe? I'd, I'd have a designer robe. I, I think I'd want something nice. But in order for that person to do strenuous work or in order for them to run a race, what they would actually have to do is take up the bottom of that, maybe pull it through and tuck it into their belt. And that way they could run. It, so you think shorts are something that they've come up with. Bermuda. Listen, they had Bermuda shorts in this day before you knew anything about it. And so what they were trying to do is to say, we're, we're getting ready to work. We've got something that we've got to do. So the English equivalent of this would be, it's time to roll up your sleeves. It's time to get ready. It's time to gird up the loins in your mind. It's time to prepare for action. It's time for you to get ready. Take off the jacket. Gear up. Wise up. Look up. When you have a job to do, how many of you know you have to work on the job before you can do the job? If you are a plumber or if you are a carpenter or whatever it is, you've got to make sure you have all of your materials together. You've got to see what that job calls for. And so he's saying here, gather up 
the things that you need. So you got to get prepared, get focused. If you don't focus on Scripture, and if you don't focus on the Word of God, if you don't take that Word with you every day, Pastor, I can't think on the Word 24-7, but listen, isn't there something that you studied that morning? Isn't there something brewing in your mind? Isn't there something that you're meditating on, and you think on that Word during the day? Maybe it could be the Word of a song, and, and you think about that, and and, and maybe it's something we've sung today. Uh, you can believe the unbelievable and do the, I don't know all the lyrics of that, I, but I can hear Tawana singing it in my mind. And sometimes I can hear what has been said. I can take that verse of scripture that Pastor Tim put on 21 days of prayer, and the day is nine, it's Psalm 95 and 6, and today I said, Lord, revive your people. Lord, revive your people. Lord, you're doing a work. You're reviving your people. Keeping that word going. I'm making my mind mind alert. And so if you don't focus on scripture, you are going to be at the mercy of your flesh. You're going to think the things that the flesh wants to think. Your mind will default to the way you've always thought. The way that you've always done things. Listen, God wants to transform your mind. If you want your actions transformed, first of all, you got to change your mind. And so, therefore, the Lord is saying to us that we've got to be alert. It'll roam around. How many of you know your, your mind loves to roam? And it'll get into things that it, where it does not need to be. I've mentioned, you know, our mind is somehow like a, a wild animal. It will go to where it wants to go. Where is the food source? If it hears a noise, uh, it will respond to that noise. It will react. God is trying to teach us that as God's people, we don't react. We respond according to the Word of God. And that is a difference. When the thought comes that is contrary to the Word of God, some of you have had a thought already today. Some of you had a thought, boy, I'm ready for lunch. Well, you, listen, you need to take that thought and put it aside just for a minute. You're going to get your lunch today, but we're talking about the Word right now. And so, therefore, you've got to say, that thought is not what should be my thought right now. The enemy may say, you're not going to make it. You're, you're going to fail. They're, they're against you. I'm not going to go any further. I'll never change. He'll never change. She'll never change. This is the way it's always going to be. And the enemy loves to fill your mind with those thoughts. I'm not going to get any better. This sickness is going to just tear my life apart. I'm not going to have the resources that I need. My child's going to get in trouble because it's seems that that's what's happening and so I begin to think all those thoughts and the enemy says you're just like everybody else listen you've got to stand up and arrest that thought in the name of Jesus and what does the Bible say let's look at it second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 here's what the Bible says for though we live in the world how many live in the world I'm glad some of you do. We live in the world, but we don't do this. We don't wage war, war, war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. And then the next verse, we demolish arguments and every pretension. Pretension. That means there is a, somehow the enemy's got a plan. It, there, he, it may appear good, but he's there to s deceive you and to hinder you that set itself up against the knowledge of God. And we do what? We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And so in order to know what the truth is, you've got to know the truth. And the truth will set you free. 
And there are times I get up in the morning and the enemy will say, this day is not going to work out. You've got a lot going on and it's just going to be hard for you. And I just have to say, Lord, you made this day. Lord, this is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Early will I seek thee. And I seek you today. And I thank you that you go before me and that, Lord, you're my rear guard and the angels of the Lord are encamped around about me and I'm victorious today by the blood of Jesus and there's nothing that comes my way that I can't overcome by your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit now does that mean that I will that I will not have challenges no you're gonna have challenges in fact you're gonna have a lot more of them as we see the day of the Lord approaching but you've got to make sure that you are in that word so you've got a choice You've got to say, thought, you are trespassing. And you've got to rest that thought. And you, then you talk about what God has said and the goodness of the Lord. So you've got a choice in this. You can live according to your flesh or you can live according to the Spirit. And so it's death or life. I'm, and I want to say this to you because I want to encourage you. This does not always happen immediately. In your walk of faith, you're going to realize that you have to grow and learn to appropriate the Word of God every day. I'm better at this than I was. When I was a, a young person or a young believer, I'd, I didn't put the Word into, into action. I, I was still living according to my fleshly thoughts. But now when things come, I have to say, I am going to let God's word take preeminence in my mind. And so you've got to realize, some of you might get frustrated, but keep on being in the word of God. Fight. Don't let the enemy take over and let you feel like it is a lost cause. Are you with me today? God is going to give you what you need. And here's what the Bible says. He will keep me in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Now, that's what we have to do first. Be alert. Be alert. I remember playing baseball, and every now and then in Little League, the coach would have to, you know how little boys are sometimes, and, and little girls too, they're out there in the field, and they're picking stuff and doing all kinds of things. You know, in the spirit... A lot of us are doing that. And what you've got to realize is that sometimes the Holy Spirit, the coach has to say, be alert, look alive. We're in war. And the only way you're going to overcome is that you're ready for the battle. So be alert. Second thing, here's what Peter says. Be sober. Verse 13, the Greek word is nepho. And it means to be collected in spirit, temperate. The modern term is have it together. Now, I know that there's a, a phrase some of us use sometimes, I, I, I got to get it together. And so what I'm talking about here is that to be sober-minded is to allow the Holy Spirit to control our mind and to be alert. Now, there are a lot of types of, and I'll put in your notes, couple of ways that the enemy will control your mind <clears throat> and after I, I begin to continue studying there are multiple ways that the enemy tries to come against your mind and you and the Bible says we are not ignorant of his devices so I want to just share something with you today I know some of you may not like what I'm going to say but here's what we talk about the first thing under the influence of substances Watch out, Pastor. Let me say something to you. I'm going to just make this real simple. If there is something chemical that you have allowed to just dominate your life, you're in trouble. Now, I'm not talking about a doctor's prescription. Thank God we, we need those things. 
but I want you to understand that we live in a world where there are substances, synthetic substances, there are liquid things, and you know what I'm talking about. And so you can get intoxicated by these, by these substances. Some of you are not happy with me right now. If you are intoxicated, buzzed, loaded, plastered, smashed, stewed, stoned, tipsy, and hammered, you're in a bad place, my brother and sister. Tell them, Pastor. But I want to say something else. We live in a world, and, and it's going it's to be like this. Some of you are not going to understand this, but here, listen. Because there are things that may be legal, is it best for your soul? Is it best for your mind? Well, they're going to legalize this. Well, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to buy this synthetic. Listen, my brothers and sisters. God wants us to be sober-minded. Now, that's all I'm going to say about that. But that's not all this verse is saying. You can be under the influence of the world and fleshly things and be just as intoxicated and buzzed if you were on a substance. What are we talking about? You can be under the influence of styles. I got my belt card, and man, I am. I got to have the newest thing, the latest thing. I got to make sure that I am styling and profiling. If that is your life, listen, there's nothing wrong with wearing nice things. But if that becomes your God, you are in trouble. I'm preaching now. You can be addicted and intoxicated by your culture. You can be addicted and intoxicated by politics. Watch out, Pastor. If that's all you're consuming right now, listen, my brothers and sisters. We, yes, we need to vote. We need to pray and ask God to minister. But if you're on CNN and, and Fox and SIN 24-7, listen, why don't you look at what God is doing in the earth? Why don't you see how God is ministering? Why don't you understand that the power of God is at work today? Thank God for these young people. Thank God for the spirit of God that's at work in university campuses. They don't, they don't tell you about all that, but I'm telling you why. God is at work today. And so you can get intoxicated by a lot of... You can get intoxicated by recreation. Your position, authority, pornography, sports, your own desires, your own dreams, your philosophy. You can be intoxicated by, well, pastor, we, we have to have desires, and yes, but make sure your desires are sanctified and under the word of God. You are always prone to access or excess. You have access, and it leads to excess. And so, therefore, you can be under the influence, and then I want to just talk to, about this, too. You can be under the influence of people if Jandra or Jandra is in a good mood today in our office whew, the office will be good listen you have to realize God is good regardless of what happens with somebody else the enemy will tell you they're against me and the enemy will, he will somehow say to you that that person's got a posse against me. I want you to know something. If God is for you, who can be against you today? And so you've got to understand, you can be under the influence of a person and then you can be under the influence of the enemy. 
He will lie to you. He will tempt you. He will tell you to go ahead and indulge. He will tell you that, that you can just have your way. Listen, the enemy is the controller general, and he wants you to live your life over here rather than over here. So I want you to understand that you've got to realize that you've got to set a watch over your mind. Stay on guard. Ephesians 6, the helmet of salvation. 1 Peter 5, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant. Your enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Here's the question I want to ask you. Who's on night watch? If there are things that you want to protect, you'll set a watch over it. At the port, they have night watchmen. Where my dad used to work at Warehouser, now it's, it's Domtar. They've, they've got people who protect that compound. My question is, are you allowing the Holy Spirit to stay on night watch? The Romans set up garrisons every thousand yards and 4,200 soldiers were involved in protecting that empire. Listen to me. It's time to protect the investment. It's time to protect your spirit, man. It's time to protect your body. It's time to protect your mind. It's time to protect your future. And the, you can protect all the things you want. You say, well, I put protection in in case I, I get in a nursing home and I've got safeguards for my money. I've got all these things, but I want you to know that God can put a safeguard over your mind so that you can live in victory regardless of what happens on planet earth. We're going to see some different things before the coming of the Lord, but I want to tell you God is going to keep his people strong by the word of God today. So God wants to keep you strong. First Peter chapter four and verse seven. Let's go to first Thessalonians five, six. This is what he says. Let's not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and what? Sober-minded, Sober knowing the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 1 Peter 4, 7, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled, sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Now, I want to tell you that the last thing that we need to keep our minds on is this. Yes, we need to be alert. We need to be sober. But I want to close my message with this. The Bible says in verse 13 that you've got to set your hope on what? On the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. So we set our mind or our hope on the grace, that's the what, and on Christ, that's the who, that will be revealed at that day. This is your mindset. I, I, la yesterday afternoon, I, I, Miss Kathy said, let's have a steak tonight. And, and so I made it to the IGA and I got some, some beef and uh, I had it marinating but, and I wanted to wait. And, and, but you know what? Around 4 o'clock, something happens inside. And you see those chips on top of the refrigerator. And you see all the, they see these nuts. You got all these almonds. I mean, they got all kind of almonds now. Cocoa almonds, blueberry almonds, all kind of this stuff. We got all this. And, and then there's some pimento cheese in the refrigerator. And I'm telling you. And, but you know what? I could feast on that stuff and totally miss what I got coming at 6 o'clock on that grill. So what I'm trying to tell you today is this. You can have the fleshly desires fulfilled, but if you want what God has for you, there are some things that are worth waiting for. And God wants you to know that his grace is going to be revealed in a greater way than you have ever experienced in this life. I'm thankful for the grace today. I'm thankful there's grace to live today. There's grace to overcome. There's grace to deal with the meetings. There's grace to deal with my finances. There's grace to deal in my home life. There's grace to deal with your children. There's grace to deal with the physical things that you're going through. There's grace to deal with the, your neighborhood and with your neighbors and all the things. There's grace to deal with the family when y'all get together at Thanksgiving. But what I want to tell you today is this. There is a greater grace that's going to be revealed when we see Jesus 
us face to face. I believe that the grace is going to be so strong and there'll be a revelation of what God has done, how he saved you, how he redeemed you, how he pulled you out when you didn't even know about it and how God has blessed you. God brought you from nothing and made you somebody in the kingdom and gave you his spirit and gave, caused you to be an overcomer. And on that day when he appears and you see him face to face, you're going to say, what great grace has been manifested in my life? What great grace? I don't deserve you, Jesus. I don't deserve an eternity with you. But Jesus is going to say, welcome, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I know there's some things that are being revealed today, and there's some good things that happen in your life, but nothing can compare with the grace that will be revealed when you see Jesus face to face. So I want to tell you something. Here's what you got to do. You got to be alert, be sober, realize the grace of God is with you today, but the grace of God, as a little boy says, it gets gooder and gooder. Every day, God has blessed you. There is grace, and when you love the Lord and you're in his word, you get a greater understanding of his goodness. The Lord is good. The Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever. How many of you know that God's grace, it will never end? Oh, I wish somebody would praise him in this house. I wish somebody would thank God for his grace. Thank him for his goodness. Thank him for his mercy. Stand with me. Stand with me. We're, we're going to sing Tawana that second song. Talked about the mind. Here's what I want us to do. Some of you may be sitting here and say, Pastor, I've had to battle my mind all week long. My life, I feel like it's a struggle. Listen, Jesus came to set you free, and he came to set us free so that we could have peace. And maybe you're in this room today, and you would say, hey, Pastor, I need the peace that passes all understanding. I need to win this battle in my mind. Listen, if you win this battle in your mind, the sun will look brighter. Your house will look cleaner. You say, Pastor, you're, you're just talking. No, no, I'm talking about the fact that your mindset will change and God will let you see just how good he is. I'm believing God to help you today, but you're going to have to start. Wouldn't it be nice if sometimes God would just zap us? Boom! I'm instantly mature. I've got everything together. Listen, this is a walk of faith, and you've got to learn to mature. Just like you had to eat to grow, you're going to have to digest this word in order to grow. So how many of you want your mind to be renewed? And you need that today. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. You, you just say, Pastor, by me coming and standing here, I'm asking God to help me with my thought life. With my thought life. Uh, I'm telling you, the enemy, I talked about some synthetic things. I talked about, a, listen, some of you are intoxicated by your phone. You play games for hours, but you can't get into the Word of God. I'm preaching better than you're letting on right now. Listen, this is where we're, this is where we're going to overcome. So it's time to be alert, be sober, and let the grace of God flow. Now, if you, you're saying, Pastor, I just need help in this area, but I need some prayer. I want you to come right down here. This is how we're going to close this service. I need some prayer. I need the help in my mind. The enemy's coming against me. I need to overcome. I need to overcome. 
I just sense there are a lot of individuals that need some freedom today. A lot of them. You know what? I thank God for these young people. If I said come, they come. Don't you appreciate that? Amen. Don't you appreciate that? But I want to say something. There's some 20 to 50 and 50 to 75. And I'll tell you, at 62, I have to fight. And the enemy will not win. He will not win. I'm going to fight and I'm going to win the battle because greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Some of you need to come. Some of you need to come. Some of you are standing there, yeah, I, I deal with this, but I'm not going down there. Tell the enemy to get off and to move on. You're going to have victory today. Some of you are going to have to take a step of faith. You're going to have to take a step of faith. And by you coming, you're saying, I mean business. I want some freedom and I want some peace in my mind. Come on, we'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. We'll wait for you. Spirit of God, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray. Some are still coming. We're going to pray. We're just going to make this our confession of faith. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. And we're going to pray those three things. And we're going to start putting this into practice. And then we're going to worship just for a moment. So here's what I want you to do. Sometimes I have to do this. Sometimes I have to put my hand on my head. And I have to say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to believe what God said. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody here, you can do it out there. Maybe you need a tune-up in your mind. How many need a tune-up? Put your hand on your head. Pray for yourself. Say this with me. Say this with me. In Jesus' name. By His Spirit, I will be alert. I will be sober-minded. I will be filled with the Word of God. I'm going to focus on the grace of God. And the greater grace that will be revealed on that day. I will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of my testimony. And I love Jesus more than life itself. And I love Jesus more than life itself. And Satan, you're defeated. Satan, you are defeated. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I am an overcomer today. And I am an overcomer today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to praise Him right where you are. Give Him praise right where you are. Yes. When I look back over my life and I think how good you have been my soul.
93 octane. <laughs> and if you'll make this your life, God will do some healing in your mind. Every time I go in Pastor Shad's office, he's got his Bible open. You need to have a little testament in your pocket. You need to have you version on your phone. You need to listen to the Word of God. You need to let the Word of God dwell in you. you. Pastor, you preach this a whole lot. Listen, this is your life. I'm, I'm making it as simple as you can make it. If you want to overcome, God has provided a way for you to overcome. And you can overcome. Turn to your neighbor today and say, I am an overcomer and I got a made up mind. Amen. God bless you.